This is Joseph James from Roller Coaster Junkies, and today I'm going to be counting down the top 20 wooden roller coasters in the world. This is the 2018 edition. I'm going to start doing lists like this um, because I think they're kind of fun to make. Um, they're a little bit challenging, which I like a good challenge. And also, yes, Swamp Fox is on this list. Just a little bit of spoiler there. And, you know, since Swamp Fox is such a memed coaster nowadays, might as well have it on here. Number 20, we have Troy Toverland. This is just barely beating Gold Striker. Uh, this is an awesome ride, guys. It's long, it's fast, it's got great airtime. It's just a lot of GCI goodness on this ride. Um, it's located in Europe, which is pretty cool. Uh, Canada Coaster Van is in this. He has a pretty awesome POV of this if you, go, if you want to go check that out. And yeah, pretty awesome ride. So at number 19, we have... Ravine Flyer 2 at Waldemere. This is a pretty awesome ride, too. Um, lots of good ejector at a time. It does have the typical PTC trains, which is just okay, I guess. Um, I missed my opportunity to ride this since when I went to Lake, went to Erie, Pennsylvania. It was closed. The park was closed, and they advertised it as open, so that was kind of a bummer, but I did go to the state park, and I also got some pretty good views of this ride. It's a pretty awesome coaster, and uh, yeah. Lots of GCI goodness. It goes, it, it relies on the train a lot, as I saw in the POV, and it also is pretty fast. It doesn't let up, and it also goes over the road, which is pretty unique. And um, also, it yeah, it's just really good. At number 18, we have Swamp Fox at Family Kingdom. This is an awesome wind roller coaster. Um, it might not be have the most impressive stats, but it's a pretty awesome ride. It goes 50 miles per hour. And it's got a lot of ejector airtime. This is a, the length isn't the most longest wooden roller coaster. It's actually pretty average for the time for a wooden roller coaster. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And uh, yeah. At number 17, we have Renegade. This is a pretty awesome GCI. It's one of the best. And uh, it's really unique, um, really fast. Um, yeah, it's just a really awesome ride. It's got a lot of twistiness to it. It's got a nice S-spin drop. And it's just a really awesome ride. Criminally underrated. And at number 16, we have Phoenix at Knievels, which is a little bit overrated. But uh, this is an awesome ride. It's smoother than Swamp Fox. It's longer than Swamp Fox. Um, it goes 45 miles per hour. And yeah, it's a little bit slower, but uh, Swamp Fox has a steeper drop in the more insane, like... Uh, Hill changes and stuff, but this is uh, more of a, uh, I wouldn't say it, it's more of like a, it's less of a rapid ride, it's more of a spread out ride, but this one's still awesome, you get some great, it has the best floater air time on any wooden roller coaster, and it's pretty awesome too, but it pretty much wins for being longer and smoother. At number 15, we have the wood coaster I cannot pronounce at Tato Park, and this is a pretty awesome ride, it's pretty long. It's got some great airtime. It has uh, a lot of great stuff from the Gravity Group. It's got Timberlanders as you see there, so lots of airtime. And also these trains are very comfortable. So at number 14, we have Coaster at p &E Playland. This is a pretty awesome ride, guys. Um, if you watch Canada Coaster Fan, you know he loves this ride. And this is a criminally underrated roller coaster. It's, it's pretty much has very similar stats to uh, Swamp Fox. And if you look at this train, this barely even has a restraint, um, which helped it gain the reputation for the airtime it has. And also has some crazy, insane laterals. This ride is just insane. And if I could, I would rate it a little bit higher on this list. At uh, number 13, we have Will Don Timber. At Europa Park and this is a pretty awesome GCI it's really long it's really tall and it's really fast um, it has that uh, it has the uh, polyurethane wheels on it which does kind of slow it down a little bit but it's still an awesome ride really smooth really fast got some great airtime laterals in there too so just a really awesome GCI roller coaster at number 12, we have Hades 360 at Mount Olympus. And this is a really awesome ride, guys. Criminally underrated. You don't ever hear people talking about it except how bad this coaster is. And it's just actually a great ride. I think the main complaint 
is that people just don't like this park because the park is pretty terrible, especially with operations. This just this is just an awful park. But they have an awesome roller coaster there. And yeah, it's a great gravity group. Some people have said maybe it's better than Voyage, but I doubt that. And especially it's what's really unique about it is it goes under the parking lot. Yay! And most of the time the lights are off. It's in a lot of the POVs you watch. They did turn on the lights, and sometimes the lights are on, sometimes they're off. It really depends on what day you go. But yeah, it's a, it's an insane ride. And then, at number 11, we have Boulder Dash at Lake Com Balance. This is an awesome ride, guys. Really fast. Um, it really relies on the train. And I think if this coaster is just placed on flat land, uh, not as many people will like it. But the train interaction makes it a lot more fun. It goes real. It gets really close to the trees. Um, it's better than Beast at least. And uh, yeah, it's just a really awesome ride. Awesome train coaster. Really awesome, but not a number one wooden roller coaster. At number ten, we have Thunderhead at Dollywood. Really awesome GCI. Very intense. Very fast. Um, it has that station flyby, and it's just a really awesome ride. It's really fast. Really tall. You know what I mean. So. At number 9, we have Mystic Timbers. This is very similarly stat to uh, Thunderhead, but this ride is smoother, and I think the airtime is better on this thing. And, uh, yeah, it's a really awesome ride. The shed was a little bit disappointing, but at least the ride is super awesome. So, at number 8, we have Wildfire at Kalmarden. Uh, really long, really tall, really fast RMC, but the problem is with this ride is that it has that pacing problem towards the middle of the ride, but then it kind of builds up speed again. It's it's not really the most consistent ride, and that kind of brings it down. It wouldn't have been higher if it was more consistent, like Outlaw Run. So, at number 7, we have Boulder at Leesburg. This is a really awesome Intamin wooden roller coaster. Um, it has those turns, there's not really any laterals on those turns, but it has some really good ejector airtime. So, at number 6, we have Alla Run at Silver Dollar City. This is a really awesome ride. It interacts with the terrain. It's got three inversions. It goes 68 miles per hour. It's tall, it's fast. It's not the longest ride, but it's really good, and a lot of people love it. So... We're getting into the top five now. We got Wood Coaster Night Valley. This ride is criminally underrated, mainly just because it is in China and it's at a park with only one roller coaster. And there's not really anything else to this park. But it's a really, if you just see there, it's 4,870 feet long. Actually, I think it's actually like 160 feet tall. The last time I checked, uh, it's not really exactly known. I think those are kind of guesses online. This is These are the stats from RCDB. But it's a really fast, really long ride. If you watch the TPR uh, POV of this thing, you're like, is it ever going to end? It has a few station flybys. It's really awesome, very intense. Lots of ejector airtime on this thing. And at number four, we have T Express to Everlyn. This is basically just El Toro and. Uh, it's El Toro and. It's actually pretty much every single. Uh, I would say it's every single instrument prefab prefab combined. Really awesome ride. And you might be wondering, well, why didn't Colossus make the list? Um, because Colossus is currently standing but not operating. It will not be operating until 2019, so it will not make this list. But this is a really awesome instrument prefab, but it's not the best because you you probably know what the top three are. And the top three go from any order guys it's pretty much the same coasters but in different listings so don't get offended by this but this seems to be the general consensus but it's kind of my opinion too in here so you know you uh you know kind of fans of the certain park might be disappointed and here we go and number three we have voyage this ride is awesome it's long as fast uh it's really intense. I think the air time could have been better. It's mainly this. It's really big hills, which some people didn't like, but I think they're really good. 
They got some nice sustained floater airtime. They got ejector airtime. It's just a really awesome ride. It's really long. Um, the main problem with this ride is it's a little bit rough. And I guess that's because of the PTC trains. But that I don't think that's it. Because if you if you look at I think it's just the structure of the ride and the tracking. And that's the main problem with this thing. So, because, uh, GCI trains and, uh, gravity group trains wouldn't fix it that much. Because if you look at a certain coaster called Wildcat, that actually made it worse. So, <laughs> at number two, we have El Toro at Six Flags Street Adventure. Really long, really awesome ride. Strong, maybe the strongest ejector airtime in the world on that Rolling Thunder Hill. Which apparently pulls negative 2.2 Gs. And this might offend some of the Great Adventure fanboys and fangirls, um, which are kind of people I don't really like that much because they're always like, oh, Great Adventure is so great, even though I thought it was actually just not that great. <laughs> and uh, this is just a really good ride and an okay ride. So, and number one, of course, it's Lightning Rod at Dollywood. Uh, really awesome, really intense ride. It's pretty long. Um, it is over quickly because it is insanely fast. The launch has not been slowed down. That has been a myth that's been going around. That's been even proven by the park. And they did modify the launch, but they did, did not slow it down. So it's still reaching the same speed. I think it's just not accelerating as fast as it, it was. Not accel it's not accelerating as fast as it was doing because I remember it. It was a pretty insane launch, and I think it's just kind of goes up. It's a little bit slower now, but it still reaches the same speed. So the launch has been slightly modified, but it still reaches the same speed. And yeah, this is a pretty awesome ride. And it's, I think all the problems it had are kind of behind us now because the launch has been fixed. It's now reliable. And I was lucky to ride this during a time where it was very questionable if it was going to be open or not. So, thank you for watching. Please subscribe and go check out our website. And please comment what other lists you would like to see from us. And we will try to make them. And yeah, thanks for watching.